you know, biting the finger that has given you the food. We know these things. Yeah, we know, therefore, it, it, in my view, I disagree with you. It cannot say that politics and, and, and the rule of law do not always have to go together. I believe it is an imperative that for good governance, the rule of law should really be the cornerstone for any political discourse. I rest my case. And uh, maybe before you do, also diplomacy, I think, is a sister principle to the rule of law. Maybe you could just speak a little bit about this, because uh, with your experience as the Cabinet Secretary for Foreign Affairs and with your involvement in many of Kenya's uh, quite important diplomatic ventures in the last few years, how have you been able to impact uh, democracy and governance in this country uh, from a diplomatic point of view? Well, I can talk on that subject until people become hungry and believe me. So, but may I quickly say, I don't like the word, you said I was cabinet secretary. No, I was minister. Minister, sir. This thing about cabinet secretary or, or chief cabinet something, that's why we are trying to assist Musadia to have a better title. <laughs> okay, chief cabinet secretary. Yeah. Uh, for me, therefore, under BBI, by the way, that was a recommendation that we should go back to co-ministers, ministers. We are not an American state to be secretary for secretary of state, by the way. If you are to follow that, Mudavadi will be secretary of state. You know what Blinken is today. And the wrestling is having to do in the Middle East. Therefore, the, the, uh, I believe personally that diplomacy is a very important matter. Maybe a combination of law and democracy is what gives me that meal. Because there are things you cannot do in terms of diplomatic contact. You cannot wait, rise up here and, and, and call Kagame names. <laughs> you allow a minister to abuse a head of state. That is going against the norms of diplomacy. Yeah, you remember recently, uh, a cabinet minister attacked another country, you know? You must understand that nations coexist following the collapse of the Cold War, when the world has hoped, uh, had hoped then to, to reap what we call the peace dividend. You know the collapse of the Berlin War? I actually keep a piece of the Berlin War and as one of my collections, because it does exemplify the hard attitudes that divided the world between East and West. Now the collapse, uh, made it now easy for the world to look at, wow, we have the role one nation. And all we are trying to look at is reform of the UN system and where we can bring in countries that were on the other side, mainly Germany and Japan, to be members of the permanent fight. You know, I don't know whether our listeners, I mean our participants here, know that the United Nations Security Council comprises five permanent members. And each of those members can veto a decision. And that's why I give the example. One time, the first uh, OAU Secretary General, I think it was, Organization of African Unity, was the uh, Dr. Salim Salim from Tanzania. He was nominated, he wanted to be Secretary General of the United Nations from Africa. But the Americans vetoed Dr. Salim's candidature. And you know what Mze Nyerere did that time? He said, okay, we are going to make him Secretary General of OAU. That's how he became the OAU Secretary General. I said these things in recognition of the fact that a distinguished Kenyan in the person of our brother Raila Molodinga, who is going to present his candidature to be the chairperson of the OAU. Now, and all of us, and I must congratulate Kenya Kwanza. Of course, we congratulate ourselves in, in, uh, in Azumeo. And people should stop speculating. I've seen terribly misleading stories. When we met at Azumeo, uh, La Omoja, uh, to get a briefing, then you get a headline story, completely different. So he was flawed, he was kept, he was asked questions, he was doing a lot of things. That is Kenya for you, but that's okay. Checks and balances. None of that happened. But therefore, diplomacy, in my view, if Raila Odinga now becomes a chairperson of AU, imagine the elevation that you give to this country and to the East African region. It's a very good thing. 
and therefore sometimes it's good also to look at other options and to which other well. We will campaign to the fullest extent possible because that is part of democracy, right? Um, for, for diplomacy. I wish Kenyans could embrace, actually embrace a, a measure. You know, we have in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we have very qualified Kenyans who are career civil servants. But the regimes like Kenya Kwanza comes in and deposes cronies to places where they have no idea about democracy. They end up causing embarrassment and the image of the country continues to suffer. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, that is what is happening in Kenya Kwanza. No idea about diplomacy. Unfortunately, before I allow uh, my senior Michael Horror, the Secretary of CMD, to come and ask you a few questions, Your Excellency. Just one last question. Uh, there's a remark that you made in the press very recently uh, where you alluded to the fact that uh, your brother, Raila Odinga, there's some things that he will not be able to say and you will need to say them on his behalf. I believe this goes in tandem with our topic for today, which is giving uh, your views on governance from an opposing, uh, from an alternative. And uh, do you feel that you will be able to adequately uh, take that mantle of speaking uh, truth uh, in an alternative voice that many people have not been uh, used to before? That this is now Kalonzo Musioka going to the very front. But Kalonzo Musioka is a member of a team. Azmiu is a very strong team. I can tell you. I cannot pretend I know everything. Now look at Eugene and his eloquence. Look at Oparanya, yeah, he's a chairman of the executive board. Look at Mother Karua herself, all right? Okay, what is it that makes you think, because you can't carry this along, we just say, we will say things that Baba cannot say, all right? We have Mwangu area, we have governor, governor, uh, former governor of Meru, Peter Mwenya, himself a lawyer. By the way, <laughs> our brother, Wanja Koya, He's a very senior lawyer in immigration matters. Oh, so we, we can have each of us speaking on those things. But should it happen that uh, the first among equals lot falls on me, believe you me, you have seen nothing. One of my coffee is excellency. If you will allow me, please let me now welcome uh, Michael Ora to ask you just a few more questions before we can uh, allow you to take your leave. So please let us welcome the Secretary of CMB, uh, Center for Multi-Party Democracy, Mr. Michael Ora. Thank you, thank you. Um, in the interest of time, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I will save the, uh, Your Excellency a lot of questions. I will yield my time to open the plenary to some very quick incisive questions without context, without introduction, without background. So we are committing to your question takes 30 seconds or it's no question or a quick comment. Um, I have been sent for two questions without which if I don't answer them, my paycheck will suffer irreparably. So allow me and it will be taxed. <laughs> Thank you, Your Excellency. If Kenya was to have you as a president, you'd be the first president diplomat or diplomat president. Um, a question has been asked here about the stature of Kenya among community of nations. And you've tried to speak a little bit about recent incidents. Um, what is your take in a very quick, are we good in our stature among the community of nations from a diplomatic perspective, or are we on decline? And what would a, an Asimio government, uh, a WIPA government, an alternative government uh, position look like? The second question is about boundary delimitation, the conversation that has just taken place here. Um, in a very quick um, summary, would you walk uh, the audience through, like you would a six-year-old, from the NARCO report? What is the process? What can people look forward to in terms of your recommendation for on boundary delimitation? What would be the A, B, C, D? Um, as you reflect on those, I would, uh, there's a roaming mic, so we want to take two questions. One from this side, one from this side, gender 50-50, and then we combine those two to make four, and then we see 